Hey there. Thanks so much for checking out Coffee with Brett. Cheers to you for joining me today. So I've got a quick question for you. Are you a nice person? Hmm. I feel like you probably are. I mean, when I think about project managers in general, I think, yeah, mostly nice people. And why is that? Well, if you think about it, it really is a kind role. You know, project managers work really hard on behalf of their teams and stakeholders to guide people and process and projects just in the right direction so that we can all share in that feeling of accomplishment and pride when our projects do wrap up. We're essentially protectors, protectors of our projects, our teams, our organizations. And I mean, really, what's nicer than that or kinder than that? But here's the thing. I kind of worry that maybe sometimes you're being too nice. I mean, it happens because nice people just want to do a good job. And at the end of the day, you do want to gain the trust and the loyalty of the people that you work with. I mean, we all know that working with people who are comfortable and trusting of us allows everyone to be more productive and more effective. It also helps them to kind of just make things easier on projects. So you do what you can as a nice person. Thing is, when you're too nice, you end up taking on way too much or creating problems for other people. All because you want to be nice? No. Nope. No, no, no. It's time that you say no. Repeat after me. No. <laughs> you know, don't find yourself in a difficult situation just because you couldn't say one little powerful word. I mean, I just said it several times and I'm pretty sure that I'll say it several more times today because I've got children. <laughs> but, you know, you can do it once or you can do it every once in a while. You can practice it or you can just say no when it's warranted. So today on Coffee with Brett, I'm going to talk about how and when to say no. But before I do that, I need you to recognize that there's a very fine line between being a leader who's a likable person and being a leader who's a people pleaser. You can be both of those things without taking on too much or without letting people down. Now, I'm not going to get into all the things you can say no to or how to judge what you can take on or what you can't, because that would just be ridiculous, right? Like those are things that you need to understand. I don't know the things that are happening in your unique situation, and only you can determine what you can actually shoot down and how you can do it. Just know that to be an effective leader, sometimes you do have to put your foot down and say no, even if it means turning down a good offer or a teammate's idea or whatever it might be. You know, if you're anything like me, you're thinking, well, I don't even want to say no. Like, how can I avoid the situation of having to say no? Well, that's where I've got you. I've got five quick tips to help you to try to avoid that awkwardness. But recognize how I said try with a little of emphasis there. Yeah, that's because saying no will be inevitable to any project manager or anyone who's leading projects. So let's jump in. First, establish your role. You know, I really think that folks end up asking PMs to do random kind of fringe work because they don't know exactly what PMs do. So spell that out. Make your role known and understood. Show your work, things like project plans, communication plans, task updates, status reports, project health reports. All of those things should be shown and discussed because it'll establish what you do, but it'll also establish the value of your role and what you do in your role. And hopefully it'll help you to stop things like Bob from marketing asking you to kind of play a wasteful game of telephone, talking about his specific project feedback when there are seven other stakeholders, you know? Set some boundaries. All right, number two is a continuation of the first thought, and it's to set expectations. You know, the biggest issues and questions on your projects are likely gonna come from people just not knowing the deal. So be sure to get your plan spelled out clearly in Team Gantt and take the time to review and discuss it with your team and your stakeholders. Talk about everything, including tasks, assignments, responsibilities, scope, dependencies, all of that should be discussed in detail. And when you do that, you're likely to get less silly questions like, can we move the deadline and still keep the project on schedule? Nope, no, the answer is no, right? All right, number three, take your time. You know, don't feel like you have to give a yes or a no in the moment. Trust me, I know project pressure can be real for project managers, but if you're being pushed to do something that you think will have consequences, 
Take the time you need to think, strategize, and really plan out a response. All right, number four, explain, explain, explain. So while I might not recommend, recommend starting with an all caps no in response, I would recommend gently getting to a no, but walking your audience through your reasoning. You know, chances are you're gonna put some thought into something before actually saying no. So explain that thought. Mostly, I'm thinking about the consequences. And that's what you're probably going to think about as well. If a stakeholder asks for a scope increase, walk them through what it will actually do to your budget and your timeline or anything else on the project. You know, sharing your own thought process is honest and open, and it shows others that you're willing to discuss things. And maybe even you're open to hearing other ideas before completely shutting something down and saying no. All right. That gets me to number five, and it's to present a plan B. You know, I remember this time I worked on a project where the client was pretty forceful, friendly, but forceful, and they made a request that would essentially increase our budget by 200%. I knew that wasn't gonna fly, but I also knew that they would fight me tooth and nail to make sure that the scope was a part of the project. So I sat down on my own and figured out ways that I could kind of lessen the impact on the team and the project if we took on that scope. I didn't have to say no, and I was able to share some creative approaches and kind of meet my client in the middle without taking on too much risk. And that helped me from saying no, it helped me to build a stronger relationship, and at the end of the day, it did make the work stronger. So you may have noticed that all of those tips rely on you being an open, honest communicator. I just wanna say that's critical here. And honestly, it's a characteristic or characteristics that are really important for any project manager to embrace. All right, you know how I said I wasn't gonna tell you how to say no? I lied. There's some phrases on screen here that could help you in the instance that you do have to say no and you wanna just be polite, right? But I'll, I'm also gonna run through some of my own kind of suggested responses to situations. So a suggestion's gonna pop up on screen and then you're gonna see my response. Let's do it. Your stakeholder asks if they can have an additional day to review your team's deliverable without impacting the overall schedule. Hey, I understand you need some extra time. The issue here is that we're really tightly scheduled. You know, we discussed your review timing when we were planning so that we could do our best to avoid this situation. And at this point, if you miss a date, but you can't move the final deadline, we're gonna have to find some time to remove from your future reviews. I can't ask the team to do their work in less time because you couldn't meet your commitment. I'm sorry. Your stakeholder asks for an out of scope request in a meeting, and you're pretty sure you can't accommodate it but you aren't 100% sure. Oh, wow, that's a really cool idea. I'm not sure that it'll actually fit into our scope, so let me take a look at that and speak with the team about what we can do, and I'll get back to you, I promise. Your teammate presents an idea that is completely irrelevant to the project's goals. Hey, this is a really interesting idea, but I'm actually a little concerned here because I'm not seeing how this fits in our goals. Can you help me to understand it? Someone asks you to do something that is out of your depth or expertise. You know, hey, I'm flattered that you think I know how to do that. That's totally out of my depth as a project manager and really not a part of what any PM does. So let me talk to our engineers about what they might do in this situation, and I'll see what we can do. A stakeholder asks you to do something that would normally take a month in half the time. Hmm, that's a really aggressive timeline based on my experience. I'll explore our options and I'll get back to you, but I do want to warn you that it's likely not possible. So I'll see what we can do. A client asks if you can add three people to the team to get the job done faster. Okay, so that's a good suggestion, but honestly, adding resources to a task like this won't necessarily make it go any faster. A manager asks you to do work that you've never done before. Oh. Well, that's interesting. I've actually never done that kind of work, so it's a bit concerning for me. I mean, I don't wanna drop the ball or let the team down or let you down. I'd be willing to give it a shot with some help, but without that, I don't think it would make sense for everyone or for the project. A teammate asks you to book a lunch for them. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not your secretary and I'm not your personal assistant. I'm a project manager. That's not really what I do, booking lunches. You know, I barely even have time to book or even have my own lunches. So you're going to need to handle that one your own. So at the end of the day, if you're honest about how you respond, if you share your thinking, and you're open to options, 
and at the same time you're nice about it, you can absolutely say no without even saying it sometimes. That said, you know, don't be bashful. Say no when you need to. Do what's right and everything's going to work out for you, for your projects, and the people involved. Hey, thanks again for sitting down with me today. If you're enjoying Coffee with Brett and you want some more PM video content in your life, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll find a lot more content like this as well as pre-recorded project management classes, Team Gantt tutorials, and other web series. We also have a ton of free content and downloadable resources to help you to manage your projects better over at teamgantt.com. I hope you'll check it out and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Hey. Oh, 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 oh,